Well, ladies and gentlemen, we all know who Nelson Peltz is. We know he is seemingly trying to take over Disney, getting some uh, more board seats and just trying to change stuff, basically. He's what's known as an activist investor. Uh, hilarious term. It's an investor that wants to make money. They, they want to enter into a business and change it. So they make money. Yeah. That's an activist investor. I would have thought that they'd got activist investors on board when it came to BlackRock and Vanguard, but apparently Nelson Peltz, the guy who wants a return on his investment, is an activist investor. Funny. But anyway, he's obviously uh, been accumulating more and more shares uh, of Disney stock, and he's looking to change stuff up. Now, he's essentially revealed his objectives and tactics when turning around companies. Now, this is relevant because he's going to hopefully uh, be doing this to Disney. And it's interesting. We'll take a look at this because we can refer back to this video and this information in hopefully six months time and see what he's done. See whether he's implemented, managed to implement any of these things in relation to Disney. And it'll be interesting to see what the landscape of Disney could look like moving forwards. So... Hit subscribe if you're new here, turn the bell notifications on, let's dive into this. So investor Nelson Peltz, the founding partner of Tryan Fund Management, explains his objectives and tactics when turning around companies. So Peltz obviously is now, well he, he was in a proxy war with Walt Disney Company, but now he's looking to take over multiple seats even further than that. He, he dropped his proxy war because Bob Iger promised that they turn the company around, they haven't done that. And now he's like, you know what, actually, uh, your stock's tanking. I'm going to buy up a whole bunch more stock. You give me some seats now. So he's restarted his war. But in January this year, Tryan Fund Management nominated Peltz for election to the Disney board, claiming the company's share price has declined to near an eight-year low. It had. Uh, the company has materi materially underperformed the S&P 500 over one-year, three-year, five-year, and ten-year periods by minus 24, minus 60, minus 66, and minus 116, respectively. So the company also noted Disney's operating performance has deteriorated, including a 50% decline in adjusted earnings per share since 2018, despite Park's profitability surpassing historical levels. It just goes to show how bad it actually is for Disney. After citing these poor figures, Tryon declared that Disney's current problems are primarily self-inflicted and need to be addressed. They are self-inflicted. It's just the woke mind virus. There is literally nothing else to it. It is that. It's hiring a bunch of absolute raging fanatical dipshits and then letting them just, just keep going. Just adjust everything. Change everything. People don't want to watch this crap. People don't want to pay for this crap. This crap doesn't sell. So from there, Tryon laid out that Peltz's election to the board would allow him to craft an effective succession plan because Bob Iger needs to go, and align compensation with performance. He could improve direct-to-consumer operating margins, eliminate redundant and or excessive costs. Oh, I don't know, maybe like their chief diversity officer that Disney just hired. Yeah, may maybe that would be an excessive cost. Uh, and also refocus the creative engine to drive profitability growth. So furthermore, Tryon wants to enhance accountability on uh, capital allocation and reinstate the dividend by uh, 2025 because that's right yeah dividends it's not happening so in february tryan would drop the proxy battle noting in a press release we congratulate disney and bob Iger on their recently announced operating initiatives which are a win for all shareholders and broadly aligned with our thinking we are pleased with the role that tryan was able to play in helping to focus the board to take decisive actions which we believe will lead to a better financial result we were also pleased to see the company's pledge to restore the dividend it's not happened though, is it? However, a new report from CNBC indicates Peltz is ready to reignite the proxy battle and Tryon has increased its share in Disney to more than 30 million. Uh, in January, Tryon noted they only controlled 9.4. 9.4 million shares scared Disney back in January. 30 million will probably have them shitting themselves. So not only has Peltz and Tryon significantly increased the number of shares in Disney, but instead of just one seat on the board for Peltz, Tryon wants multiple seats now because they realise that the board is largely the issue overall. So you get more seats on the board, you can control more stuff. 
Uh, given Peltz clearly wants to make changes to the Walt Disney Company, it would be instructive to know how he goes about making the changes. So this is what's interesting. So back in June of 2022, there was an interview. Uh, and he explained how we went about fixing and repairing companies. By the way, this article is over on Bounding Into Comics. It's a good article, so please do go and check it out. Uh, I'll try and leave a link down below if I remember. Uh, we're not an active... If it, so he said, he told Rubenstein, we're not an active, an active investor. What we see is what we see really companies that we think were once great have lost their way. And that we have a plan for them to get back to greatness again. And that's what we do. We're not there to leverage up these companies. We're not there to split them up. We're not there to do all the terrible things that typically go along with the term activist. This is what I mean. He's not an activist. He literally just wants them to be profitable. We're just trying to get these companies to operate better the way they used to. Yeah, when they weren't blindsided by utter gobshite. Uh, after Rubenstein lays out that Peltz buys up a bunch of public stock in companies and then notifies the CEO that he's a big shareholder, Peltz explains how the interactions with the CEOs can go. Sometimes no one is thrilled that we're there. Some are much more receptive to hear. What we've got to say, no, hear what we've got to say. We put together a white paper to go over with management and that white paper stays private as long as we're in conversation. And if we want a board seat, when we think that they're ready to give us a board seat, it will always stay private. But if they refuse to, then we make that white paper public. And I presume this is kind of what's happened in some degree. They've asked for board seats. They've said no. So they've leaked it to the press. So when asked if he could, uh, how many times CEOs welcomed or rebuffed his advice, he stated, I can't tell you, but I don't remember anybody ever saying the former. But not very often have they been as tough as you said on the latter. Clearly, they're not thrilled to see us. But what usually happens is that these stocks go up. That's literally what's happened with Disney at the moment. He was announced that he bought more stuff. Stocks actually went up because the thought of him coming in to fix stuff, stock prices went up. And they go up nicely for the right reasons because sales have gone up, market shares have gone up, earnings clearly have gone up, and we tell them what we think they're doing wrong, he asserted. Uh, Peltz then provided an example with Procter & Gamble. The most recent one, which is really interesting, was Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble was about $70 stock for almost 10 years. The best, the biggest consumer company in the world, but really giving away market share here and there, wherever anybody was challenging them. We didn't think that the company was structured properly, so we went to them and gave them a plan. And look, there's one CEO. No one has profit and loss responsibility in this company anywhere other than the CEO. So there's really not ability to impact things because everything was a matrix organization. We gave them our structure. They rejected it. We had a proxy fight. We finally won our board seat and the shareholders won. This is what's going to happen with Disney, guys. This is why this is fascinating to watch because this is he entered into the proxy battle because Disney refused his white paper initially in January. And then they've gone, all right, sure, fine. You know, we did, pro you, you've, you've gone and said you're going to do stuff. It's not worked. So we're going to buy up more stuff. We're going to come back with even more stock. So later in the interview, Peltz explains what happens when he gets onto the board of directors. Well, first of all, we don't bring that to the boardroom. Our time is spent with the CEO, the chairman, the CFO, and we share our plans with them outside the boardroom. We try never to solve an issue in a boardroom. It's always best done the day before, the week before, outside that room. We wouldn't be there if they were doing, if they really were doing well. So it's really hard for them to straight face and tell us we're doing well and we present them with a plan. From there, he used Heinz as an example. Look at Heinz, which was our first really aggressive salvo. We bought... We became a very large shareholder of Heinz. We went to them with a plan. They didn't want any part of us. They didn't know who we were. And Heinz had had a 10-year stint of flat to down sales and earnings the same. And what we saw at Heinz very clearly is that every quarter, every year, their direct market spend declined. Okay, so everybody probably has a bottle of Heinz in their pantry. The, the key was how do you get it out of the pantry on the table and turn it upside down? That wasn't happening. So what we did is we said to them, you've got to raise your direct selling expense. Well, why did it keep going down? You know yourself if there are estimates of earnings in the next quarter and it's the middle of the quarter and your CFO comes running in and says, we're not going to make consensus. There's very little that you have impact on in that quarter for that quarter except advertising spend. 
Uh, he then shared Heinz did. So what they did is they cut advertising spend, made the quarter. But what was going to happen in the next quarter? Where was the wind at their back for the next quarter to get sales going again? So what happened is when we are all said and done at Heinz, advertising spend was about 1.5% of sales. That's probably what US Steel spends on advertising. And when we left the company, we sold it to Buffett uh, and the Brazilians. And it was spending close to 5% of sales. And we had 36 straight quarters of organic sales increase. There was no other consumer company that could say that. So he's pretty bloody good, you know. Uh, so he said, when asked if uh, he could ever just provide advice without going on the board, Pelch responded, we do do that sometimes. It's not a matter of wanting to. It's a matter of how receptive management is to our suggestions. Ferguson is a company we bought a lot of stock in, never got on the board, never asked for a board seat, really had a great relationship as we do today with the management. No need for us to go on the board. So again, bad relationship with Disney management, hence why they're really going for board seats. Uh, at one point, we were the largest share owner of Domino's. We spent time with those guys, did not feel that they needed us on the board, and they did great things. We sold the stock too early, but made a lot of money on it. But so we have those relationships at times. So do you see how this kind of outlines what's happened between him and Disney and what will happen between him and Disney? It's fascinating stuff. Genuinely fascinating stuff. Can he turn the ship? It sounds like there's a potential chance that he like will actually have a large amount of say in what's going on, but we'll see. Um, because unfortunately, he still doesn't own you know majority shares, which is an issue. Uh, but let me know what you think down below. You know, he doesn't want anything bad to do. Does he just wants to make money, restore the bloody dividends for um, shareholders? So anyway, let me know what you think. Love to hear it. Cheers, guys. Take care. Bye bye now.